Psalm 37, 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. So, I was meditating on the word yesterday, doing my Bible study, my daily plan, and I read this verse, and it really stood out to me. And I knew I, I had to do a sermon around this verse, and it didn't, it didn't come together whatsoever for me. I was looking for ways to combine it, to, to glue it together, you know? It didn't come together. So I started doing other stuff, and I knew that it wasn't, that it wasn't what I was supposed to preach. So I came back to it, and I just reread it over and over and over until finally something opened up to me. When it says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act, that's an act of what? Faith, right? Yeah. When, 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 some, when you're struggling in life through no matter what circumstance and there seems to be an easy way out, but God's telling you to wait and just have uh, faith in him during that situation to uh, exactly here patiently wait for him to act that's faith so I figured that my sermon was going to be about faith and if you think about it there's there's so many verses in the Bible in the Bible about faith so many parables so many Old Testament New Testament there's so many songs on faith and I was thinking which one is the best one to share. And the best one that I thought of to share that opened up to me is our own, uh, our own experiences of faith with God, right? Each and every single one of us have crazy, crazy stories of faith, no matter what situation we've been through. I was just thinking of some of the biggest moments in my life or in my family's life where our faith was tested. And the biggest one that I could think of, I was talking to a family member about this, and is when we all came to America. I, I don't remember it, really. I was like three years old, or I was one, actually, one and a half. So I don't remember it at all, but I have, like, glimpses of it. And if we think about it, for some of us, it might have been easier or harder, but for my family, it was, it was a crazy step. I remember three suitcases or four, $300, no papers for us whatsoever, just illegal Mexicans. <laughs> Everything was, I mean, it wasn't set up, but things were set up back in Ukraine, where I'm from Slovakia. We had a, a home with my, my parents, uh, my mom's parents. There was a job in a way, steady, I guess, for them. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure there was stable church, right? And to leave completely to another country where with nothing but a couple of suitcases and a couple hundred dollars, that's a step of faith. That's a step of faith they took out because that's what they felt was where God was calling them to go. And now, same with, I bet, many of our parents here, even ourselves, the older people who might have went by themselves. It took faith. And we look at it now, how faithful was God to our faith? How faithful was he? We have our we have a church now. Many of our Slavic people here have their own huge, beautiful churches. We have a roof over our head. We have uh, jobs, businesses, transportation, food. Sometimes the biggest problem that I have during a day is to choose which place to go to eat. I'm sick of burritos. I'm sick of teriyaki. I'm sick of McDonald's. I'm sick of that. Where, sushi, I'm sick of that. Where am I supposed to go? What to eat? How, how sick is that in a way? How, how blessed are we? Right. This land is flowing more than milk with honey. <laughs> and other, other things I think about in my life that I went through, faithful things. When a family member was really sick, I remember when I was little, just, just I was like six or seven or eight. I don't remember. But I remember getting on my knees and just praying with my family about that family member who was sick. I remember faithfully praying to God about that. I remember when overnight my parents' business completely disappeared in one night. It just burned down completely. All sorts of income, everything was just gone in one night. I remember praying with my mom about that too. 
that don't worry, we'll get through it. Don't worry. Just have faith in God. And God was faithful. It didn't it took a couple years, maybe. It took a couple years to get back. It was hard work, but God was faithful. Amen. And I bet you every single one of us have had these experiences, these troubles, these tribulations where we don't know what's, what's to come. We're, we're scared, but we had faith in God. But, you know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I tend to forget these things. And I remember just, just even some of the basic things that I had just a couple of years ago when I was praying for something simple, like, like, what am I supposed to do? Go to college, not go to college. Where am I supposed to work? What am I supposed to do? Just basic things. And God answered them. But it seems like he answered them, and I didn't even notice that he answered them. And now that I look back, it's like, wow, those prayers were answered. I spent so much time praying for that, and it was answered. I didn't even notice. And I remember on Sunday, this dude, this, not this dude, this preacher, disrespectful, was uh, preaching about, uh, and back in the day when they had the canes, right, the sticks, he was preaching about the importance of that. And I did not know that, but apparently that stick or cane or staff, staff, was not just a staff that they walked with to support their backs or their legs. It was actually a staff where they wrote down literally their whole life, their, their importance in their life. When they were born, when a certain event happened, would go another staff, they would carve it out, and so on. Just through every situation that God brought them through, they would carve out it on their staff. And I was thinking, that's so smart. That is, that's amazing. Then when, then when a man is going or a woman is going through some trouble, they look at that staff and they can see that God got them through that and that and that and that. Why would he not get them through this now? Why not? And sometimes we don't realize that. We have some new problems going on every single day. I have problems, new problems at work every single day. It's like a used, it's like a used, I'm used to it now when something happens. It's like, oh, what's new? You know, I'm the problem solver. So to me, it's nothing anymore. But like serious problems... We think about it like, whoa, what's going to happen now? This is such a big problem. But we look back, we've passed so many bigger problems in, my life, in our life. And God was faithful to those problems. And he guided us through it. So why wouldn't he guide us through this? You know, for many of us, families, it was death through the families. Something tragic happened. God guided us through that faithfully. Or divorces. Many of us grew up with single parents or no parents. But somehow God guided us through that. We were faithful and God guided us through that. Through sicknesses, through problems, no matter what. Somehow God guided us through that. And, you know, there's many different ways of faith. There's, you can be faithful in tithing to God. You can be faithful in uh, serving God in the church. You can be faithful in... Uh, doing something for God uh, outside of church, an act. You can be faithful in many ways, but you can also be faithful. I mean, faithful is, faithfulness is obedience, but you can be faithful in obedience by just staying still sometimes. Just being still and just trusting God in what he has planned for you. Just being still. No matter what's going on around you, there's that song still by Hillsong where it just says, through the thunders or whatever, I will be still with you. No matter what's going on around you. Through colleges, maybe we're trying to figure out what college to go through, through jobs, through healings, emotional, physical, whatever's going on in our life. Just to be still and have faith. And I was kind of thinking of, Tarsa, come here. What, what is faith? Exactly. Just stand behind me anywhere you want, like in a circle, anywhere, far, close. Don't let me see you. Come here. Come here. I'm going to turn around, and you stand wherever you want to stand. Okay? He stood somewhere. I have no idea where he's standing right now. Absolutely no idea. But I have faith that he's there somewhere behind me. I know he's there somewhere. I don't know where, though. 
if I turn around, I see him, I know he's right here now. That's not faith. I know he's there. So if I fall, he's going to catch me. But if I'm standing, no, he will. But if he's there, I don't know where he is. I know he's somewhere there, though, because I have faith. You can sit down. That's faith. Yeah, give him a round of applause. When you don't know for sure where or how or how close or how near, or it might seem that he's somewhere by the wall, far. I know he's there somewhere. And I know in my life, if my knees start getting shaky, or if I start falling, or I have a burden on my shoulders, and I'm about to fall, I know he's going to come there to catch me. Because he wouldn't let me just fall. If he saw that I was fainting, he, he, no normal person would stand there and just be like, Timber. I know if Alex was there, he would come and he would catch me. Because you don't want a person to fall and hurt themselves. Same thing with God. It doesn't matter. I don't know where he is around me sometimes. Sometimes he feels so close to me. Sometimes he feels far. He feels like I have no connection. But I know that he's there somewhere. And I know that no matter what struggle or what happiness or where I am in life, I know he's around me. And I have faith that he's there to catch me no matter what. And then if we turn to numbers, numbers. Numbers 9, 15. Nine fifteen. You guys there? Numbers nine fifteen. <clears throat> I'm gonna start reading it. It's a pretty long verse, so stick stick with me. It says, On the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. But from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. So there was this cloud over the Israeli nation. It was a cloud there, and it guided them. This was the regular pattern. At night, the cloud that covered the tabernacle had appeared had the appearance of fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, people of Israel would break camp and follow it. So there's a cloud. In the morning, if it starts to move, they move in that direction. All right? Continuing on. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. The cloud would stop moving. They would stop. They would set up camp. They would chill. If the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Sometimes uh, sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days. So the people would stay for only a few days and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed only overnight and lifted the next morning. But day or night, when the cloud lifted, the people broke camp and moved on. So it doesn't matter. If the cloud was there for a couple hours, a day, they followed the cloud. If it was there for a long time, they set up camp and did what they had to do. They followed the cloud. Whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle for two days, a month, or a year, the people of Israel stayed in camp and did not move on. So it doesn't matter how long. Sometimes the cloud would says would stay for a year a year, and they would sit in one place just because the cloud was there. Just because that was their sign of faithfulness to God and obedience to Him. Right. By staying still. Maybe some people were like, okay, there's a cloud there. Let's move on. I'm getting tired of being in this spot. This is a hot, humid, swampy spot. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We, it's not uncomfortable here. The last spot we were in was much better. Let's go find another spot like that. They might move, want to move on. Maybe it's not a comfortable spot. But the cloud was there, and it was the cloud sign to stay there. Just stay still. Same thing in our life. Maybe last year we had an amazing year. Maybe everything was just clicking. Everything was going great. It was the best year ever. And this year we're in a swamp. <laughs> Things are falling apart. They're not going good. Something's bad. We're always, something's always going wrong. And we, so we, stand, we can't seem to get out of it. And we just feel from the Lord that this is the place where we have to just stand right now. And just seek him. Just f faithfully just stand still 
and just seek him. Just give it all to God and just wait there. No matter how long it is, two, three, four, five months, years, you just have to stand there. No matter how uncomfortable it is, God will move on with us. He'll move on. It says that the cloud moved on. They got out of it. They left that spot, no matter where it is. And I just want to finish up in conclusion that when we, when we stand still and we, tr- and we start to seek God in our times of trouble or in any times, when we truly start to seek him and read the Bible and pray, that's the times when we're proving to God through our faithfulness that we're ready. Maybe it's a time of tribulation, let's say. And instead of trying to squeal our way out of it or try to find a, a route, a different route, we're standing still with God and trusting him. Maybe, let's say, for example, um, let's say God wants you to serve in the church, right? And you know you're supposed to serve in the church. And let's say you're having financial troubles. Your house is going to go into foreclosure, let's say. And you're, you're going to lose your house. You know you're supposed to stand there and continue serving the church. But this new job opening just opened up. And they're paying 20 grand a month. But what, what do you do? You're supposed to stand there, but... There's a, there's a way to save your house, and I can still serve in the church. What are you going to do? It's a tough choice. It's a tough choice. And we face these little every day. We might not realize it, but we face these every single day. They might not be that extreme. It might be something simple. But we face these every day. And the choice is to stand still with God, though. Because the... The outcome that will come with that will be much greater than what that job do. You might lose that job in the month. It might be some kind of fraud job. Who gets 20 grand just out of nowhere for doing nothing? It's a fraud. You'll lose it in a month, and then you have, you'll s- sold your soul. <laughs> We're not getting into that one. But the point is to stay faithful and seek him, and in him we'll prove ourselves. We'll prove our faithfulness and we'll go get through everything.